Brand new school, mm. brand new building, new resources, new absolutely everything. It was really exciting at the time. Our sort of motto here is doing an awful lot less, but doing it an awful lot better. In 2003, the school came out of um, special measures. The standards in literacy, numeracy and science um, rose. But they then said that all of our foundation subjects were quite weak. The head at the time and the deputy at the time thought, you know, we need to do something, we need to change this curriculum. The, the teachers are bored, the kids are bored, we need to inject some, some new life into it. Mm. As a staff, we came up with the main principles. We wanted our curriculum to be experience driven, to be very purposeful for our children, to be very rich in, in oral language. We have a granny living in our classroom. And she lives within our classroom all the time. Fictitious character, but as far as the children are concerned, she's very, very real. And she sets all of their work and everything we do is through Granny Smith. So through this character, you as teacher set work? Yeah, I'm Granny Smith, basically. When we came back off the holidays, there was a pillow or blanket a cup and saucer. The second day, this letter, a letter came and it said, can you please do some measuring? Some measuring? Some measuring of what? Some measuring of the classroom. What did you do then? You did all the measuring, didn't you? And then we left them on the pillow. Yeah. And then the next day, a shed appears. <coughs> really wanted something that the children would say, wow, how did that get here? And there's a fringe! Might be a witch! Yeah. Oh, man. I see, please, And what's inside it, Bradley? Can you think of something that's inside it? A shelf. A shelf, well done. What about you, Robin? Some pictures. Some pictures? Some pictures of what? People. People. Is it a photo or is it a picture? Photo. A photo. And what, what else is in there, Shoshone? Some knitting. Some knitting. So do you think Granny Smith likes knitting? Yeah. I think someone really is living in here because they've got uh, ornaments and everything like that. Why is it always in our classroom? How did they fit the shed in this door? How did they sleep in the classroom? What do you think she looks like? I reckon she's got crinkly skin. You think she's got crinkly skin? I think she might have glasses. You think she might have glasses? I reckon she has sun sunken eyes. Sunken eyes. I bet she has blonde eyes. Yeah, and then here was a, there was a letter on the door and it said... Oh, who noticed that when they came in? Did anyone read who the letter was addressed to? What did it say? Georgia? Dear children. Dear children. Oh, it's not me. Granny Smith had left them a letter addressed to them, explaining who she was, why she had come back to Colney Hill, and that she was living in their classroom, so they weren't, weren't too worried about some stranger moving into their classroom. She's quite lazy. She's quite <laughs> lazy. How do you know she's lazy? Because she gets us to do it. Say again? Because she gets us to do it. To do what? To do her work. She gets us to do her work? Oh. Is that why you think she's lazy, Chloe? She wanted a map of the school. She did, she wanted a... Why? 
Kane, why did she need a map of the school? Because she kept getting lost. She kept getting lost, that was right. So, did we help her out? Yeah. We did, didn't we? It's not the old kind of topic that people used to teach. So, geography, we're looking at old and new. So, a person, an old person, is ideal to discuss how Coney Hill used to be and how it is now to enable the children to compare. Granny Smith's washing day. Oh, gosh. <laughs> She's a large lady, isn't she? <laughs> A character is, is evolving in our classroom, but linking into all of the work that they do. Should we put that? Should we put it up there? Yeah, okay. Granny Smith used to live in Gloucester, then she moved to the seaside, then she moved to Gloucester again. And there was no one, she had nowhere to stay. Oh, you never know. That's my way of setting their work. Okay. This creative curriculum is to make them independent, but to feel they've also got some ownership over what they're doing. Okay. And it's not just individual lessons. Um, as far as they're concerned, they're not doing any work. They're just doing jobs for Granny Smith. What a brilliant idea to make some pom-poms to decorate my lunch you should make some cakes. What about Rice crispy cakes? You only need the crispies and the chocolate. Just a thought, love, Granny Smith. <gasps> Who thinks it would be a really good idea to make some cakes? So quite often she sets something up that they continue to develop through the week in their lessons. Or in numeracy she said she, she was really confused about the money because it turned out she'd been living abroad. So they developed that through the week, practicing using the money. Yeah, right. We've got £1.19 they cost. We've got enough money. You've got a pound and you've got so we've got enough money. Okay, Lena. Yeah, but we need to chuck it back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have you ever met Fanny Smith? No. Have you? No. Have you? No. <laughs> The project itself actually encourages children to take up a fantasy world. What, how, what's that like as a parent? You know, how do you deal with that? As a parent, Chloe's came home and told me she's done no work at school and she's had so many jobs to do for Granny Smith that they just haven't had time to do any work at school. So I've said to her, what do you mean you've done no work at school? She said, well, we've had to measure the classroom. We've had to do, sort everything out for Granny Smith. Mm -hmm. And that she's really convinced that this person is real and she's really doing things for Granny Smith and I think it's really good for the children. And does that mean as a parent that you were in on the secret? Totally. <laughs> totally. So yeah, you'd I have wouldn't, to be, wouldn't Yeah, you? I couldn't break that surprise for them. It's, it would be just devastating for them. Must be tempting at times. <laughs> oh, at times it is when she comes home from school and you're cooking the dinner and she wants to plague you with Granny Smith and you just think, please just leave me for five minutes. But it's really fun for them. You've set up a project, you've captured it on video. What does that mean for you as a teacher in your own professional development? For me, I'm able to watch myself, which doesn't very often happen. You never get to see yourself teach. Um, I'm able to learn how I interact with the children, whether I'm too over the top sometimes, whether what kind of questioning I'm used, and I can actually watch their responses to me. So what kind of jobs does she get you to do? Ooh. To sometimes make her food. Make her food? Like apple crumble. I can look back on it and maybe adapt it or say, yeah, that worked really well or maybe that didn't and I need to do it a bit differently next time. What did Granny Smith say we needed to buy to make the cakes? What did we need to buy to make the cakes? Tommy? Rice 
Rice Krispies and chocolate. Rice Krispies and chocolate. I'm gonna have to choose some children to go shopping for me. <gasps> Might be interesting to look at boys and girls' responses mm. to this kind of curriculum. It's a very, very different kind of teaching, and whether we are actually enthusing boys and mm. girls or whether it's one more than the other. As, as a parent, I think it's suiting both. I've got a boy and a girl who's worked with both of them. Um, one worked with Stig in the Dump and one's worked with Granny Smith. One mm. was a boy and one was a girl. Um, my boy can be quite challenging and he absolutely took to it. His learning ability was amazing with it. Mm. And the same with, with my little girl, she's exactly the same. Do you think boys and girls will learn differently in a creative curriculum? boys have always been quite weak in particular subjects like writing for example it's a it's a national problem boys writing but when they're writing about something that they're interested in and that they're engaged in ultimately the finished product is is so much better and we've noticed a, a steady improvement in boys writing and boys behavior since since adopting this with us an experiential approach like this what about the children making their own videos yeah. that would definitely be with, with this interesting. kind of curriculum it's easily we can easily knit it into there being a purpose behind making a video about their theme not just a video about their theme but actually give it a proper purpose mm. I bet they yeah. like to set up a secret camera in that shed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think this is going to Granny happen. Out. I think we're going to have to let them do this. How do you think we're ever going to see this Granny Smith? What could we do? What could we do to maybe see Granny Smith? Have you got any ideas? Because she's obviously here. When is she here? At night. At night? When we're not here? Oh. We need to come up with a plan, don't we? What could the plan be? Spy on her. We could. It's a show name. We could get um, Miss Easy to lend us a blue camera and put her in night time. They could interview Granny Smith eventually. Yeah, perhaps if they get to meet her, which they will. <laughs> okay. Try and get as close as you can. To it. So physically moving close, so pick an object you want to do and then get as, as close as you can to it really. Don't be afraid to take your hand out of the grip and just hold the camera in a way that's comfortable to get at the level of the object. Make sure you hold it when you're recording for a few seconds okay. so that when you get into your edit you've got time to use it in the program. We've got the parents um, back, you know, we've got, their, we've got their support basically, we've got them behind us and I think they've really noticed uh, an improvement in their children's behaviour as well. So if we have the parents on side and the governors on side, you know you're doing something right.